and welcome to our series on Ensunu Yesu. Just a reminder that if you still need to purchase a book, you can do so at catholicbook.net or stop in here at St. Raphael Center on Fulton Avenue and we have books available for you. Uh, as we progress through uh, our text on Ensunu Yesu, we want to remind you also that a compatible book to this is called Golden Arrow, which we will also be using throughout the rest of this series. And we hope that uh, you can purchase this also uh, by going to catholicbook.net or stopping here in at St. Raphael Center and ask one of the girls and she will get you the copy of Golden Arrow. Since there is reference made to this text in Ensunu Yesu, we are on page 71. And before we do that, we're going to now pray our chaplet of reparation. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Incline unto my aid, O God. O Lord, make haste to help me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Eternal Father, I offer thee the precious blood of thy beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. By thy precious blood, O Jesus, 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 by thy precious blood, O Jesus. 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 O Father, from whom all fatherhood in heaven and on earth, eternal Father, I offer thee the precious blood of thy beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. By thy precious blood, O Jesus. 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 By the <clears throat> Father from whom all fatherhood in heaven and on earth is named. <clears throat> Eternal Father, <clears throat> I offer thee the precious blood of thy beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. By thy precious blood, O Jesus. 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 
By thy precious blood, O Jesus, purify and sanctify thy priests. Eternal Father, I offer thee the precious blood of thy beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. By thy precious blood, O Jesus, 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 O Father, from whom all fatherhood in heaven and on earth is named, have mercy on all thy priests, and wash them in the blood of the Lamb. Eternal Father, I offer thee the precious blood of thy beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lamb of our Father, in reparation for my sins, and for the sins of all thy priests. By thy precious blood, O Jesus, purify and sanctify thy priests. By thy precious blood, O Jesus, purify and sanctify thy priests. By thy precious blood, O Jesus, purify and sanctify thy priests. By thy precious blood, O Jesus, purify and sanctify thy priests. By thy precious blood, O Jesus, purify and sanctify thy priests. By thy precious blood, O Jesus, purify and sanctify thy priests. By thy precious blood, O Jesus, purify and sanctify thy priests. By thy precious blood, O Jesus, purify and sanctify thy priests. By thy precious blood, O Jesus, purify and sanctify thy priests. By thy precious blood, O Jesus, purify and sanctify thy priests. O Father, from whom all fatherhood in heaven and on earth is named, have mercy on all thy priests, and wash them in the blood of the Lamb. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay. Page 71. Now we're looking here at the last two paragraphs on page 71. It says, My beloved Jesus, I ask thee to give me the form of life thou desirest for me. Yes, thou hast already given it to me so many ways. Help me to formulate it clearly and simply for the sake of those who will want to understand it. In obedience to thee, I entrust all the material details to thy immaculate mother, my own mother of perpetual help. Now, once again, Our Lady of Perpetual Help comes into this. I know that she is all-powerful over the treasures of the Sacred Heart. I know that she is the Ministeria Gratium appointed by the Father. I know that she is the necessity of human agent of the works of the Holy Spirit in the world, the church, and in souls. I trust her absolutely in all things. I ask thee to give me the boundless and childlike confidence of the goodness of her merciful and immaculate heart. Now, in looking at Mary once again here, first of all, the devotion that is spoken of, Our Lady of Perpetual Help, is under the care of the Redemptorist Fathers. Now, St. Ignatius, Loyola, and other saints have had devotion to this Our Lady of Perpetual Help, especially St. John Newman. This idea of Mary and the relationship of perpetual help and the unification of the Sacred Heart shows a bond of love between the two. 
Our Lady of Perpetual help to help in time of need. And there's no greater time than now to invoke her. Our Lady of Perpetual help. This unification of the heart of Christ, of his sacred heart, is the unification also of his holy face, which is seen in this book, The Golden Arrow. Because the two are intertwined, you have Christ, the merciful Savior. You have Mary at the foot of the cross. And you have John now incorporating that help and love of a mother and bringing that relationship to people and to the church and to the priests. Now, if you look at the bottom of the page there, at footnote number one, which is from the top paragraph where it says, it is, I think, like a kind of incarnation. Elizabeth, Blessed Elizabeth of the Trinity, in 1880-1906, wrote in her prayer in November 21st, 1904, the following. Now, it is in French. But translated, it means consuming fire, spirit of love, Come upon me and create in my soul a kind of incarnation of the word that it may be for him another humanity in which he can renew his whole mystery. Oh. Now, what this means is this. First of all, this mystery is a unification of the Word. Now, we know what the Word is. John describes that in the opening of his Gospel. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word is God. It is Christ. So, the consuming fire of the spirit of love is Christ to come upon us. The incarnation of the word is proclaimed every Sunday. We hear the word. We are to live it. The priest is to preach on it. If he doesn't, then there's something wrong with him. Because that's what you go to church for. Word and sacrament. If you read the documents of the Second Vatican Council on the sacred liturgy, the instruction is that the word be preached. To the people of God. And that it be lived. Accordingly. So in word. We are fed. With the spirit and the fire of that love. Of the incarnate word. And renewed. In the spirit of love. In the Eucharist. We are fed body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. That is what Jesus is saying to this holy monk. And Blessed Elizabeth of the Trinity explains this. So it was way back, even before Jesus appeared to this monk, that the word be understood and lived. Back then... In religious communities, the Lectio Divina was proclaimed. 
That's the scriptures. And the study of the scripture was utilized as action, a form of action. So they just didn't read, but they lived it. Look at the early monks of the church, <coughs> such as St. Benedict, St. Francis, St. Augustine. Within their orders that they founded, they lived out the scripture. Benedict, ora et labora. Augustine, he who sings praise twice. Francis, proclaiming the word as a deacon to the poor, the sick, the lame. So they live the message. And that's what Jesus is telling this monk that the laity and the priests must do. Live the message. The next, the top paragraph said, I know that she is necessary human agent of the works of the Holy Spirit in the world, in the church, and in souls. Okay, now, the bottom of the page, the footnote here says, necessary. Not in the nature of things by God's design and decree, and because it is most fittingly so, a truth we know from reflecting on God's choosing Mary as the Immaculate Theolokos, the New Eve, and the mother of the beloved disciple. As I just said earlier, it's the revelation again of the Holy Face, the heart of Christ, and the presentation by Jesus. Woman, behold thy son, Son, behold thy mother. It's that bond of the unification that is important here between Jesus, Mary, and us. Now, on page 72, we see this trust that Jesus is speaking of to the holy monk. He says, continue to trust me in all things, our Lord said to him. There has to be that trust in the Lord. If there is no trust by priests in the Lord, then why are they priests? I mean, that would be like you know, I want to be a priest, and if I don't trust the Lord, why am I going to seminary? Or, it's like a, a, a guy going to get married. If he don't trust the woman he's going to marry, why get married? There has to be this mutual trust. And that's what Jesus is saying. I will not abandon or forsake you in that trust. So there again, it's the same with the laity. And a lot of laity do not trust the Lord anymore. You could see it. Look around you, you could see it. Look at our society. Look at the way we live. Our culture. What do we put our trust in? We put our trust in two things today, a cell phone and a computer. If you don't have those, you're doomed. Think about it. If you don't have those two items, you're doomed. Where is the trust? The trust is people run to the computer to buy, to sell, to look, to read. So the trust is in that computer. 
That's why businesses are closing. And once that happens, the prophecies will be fulfilled. If this fails and there's nothing else, We're back to the Stone Age. Well, as I said, after, if there's a third world war, we're going to be fighting with sticks after that. Exactly. And the thing is, what Jesus is saying here, <clears throat> this nation... And it was predicted by our Blessed Mother some time ago. The eagle has fallen. There's no doubt about it. When that occurs, do you realize if this fails, electronics fails in this country, we're vulnerable for nuclear attack? We're, we're in the Stone Age. They, they can just walk in. Well, they don't have to attack us. Go back to 19, I think it was 66 or 67. When Nikita Khrushchev came to the United Nations. And at that time he was speaking to the UN. And at one point, he removed his shoe, held it up, banged it on the table three times, put it back on and said, we will bury this country without firing a shot. The shoe signified being trampled on. And that's exactly What's happening? In this, look at the next sentence. I am directing every turn of events and all the circumstances that mark the moment of your life. The beginning of my work for the sanctification of my beloved priests and for the revelation of my Eucharistic face and of my open heart hidden in the sacrament of my love. Now, when the church sort of updated itself, as they said back in the 60s. It became too modern. It fell into the trap of modernism. When that happened, society fell. Go back and think about the 60s. When the changes in the church occurred, Society began to dwindle. And by the 70s, you had moral decay. That is when the greatest number of priests and religious left. The late 60s and early 70s. The belief was gone. The trust was gone. The hope was gone. The revelation was gone. And the hidden love that was seen in the Eucharist, in the Eucharistic face of Christ was gone. Many churches were stripped. Communion rails were taken out, which they didn't have to. High altars were ripped out, which they didn't have to. Statues were removed, the tabernacles were removed, put into other places. Moral decay began at that moment of life. 
And now we are paying the consequences of that decay. The baby boomers. My age group. And their children. They are seeing the results of their life when they grew up in the children they have raised. They're not going to church. They're turning to pornography, drugs, sexual promiscuities, alcoholism. So that decay of what Jesus is speaking about not only affected the beloved priests and religious, but it became part of the culture and it destroyed the sacrament of love. When things of the ordinary are brought in to the sacred, the sacred dies and it becomes an ordinary thing. Just like they were using glass goblets for the precious blood, ordinary dishes for the, the Eucharist. These things you use in your home. So when you go to church, you think, well, okay. It you could tell they don't have respect for the Eucharist when they say, I have the wine today. Or I have the bread today. That's wrong. The terminology is, I am assigned to have the precious blood. I am assigned to have the body of Christ. If you want that kind of lingo, go down the street to the Protestant church. Where is the belief Jesus is saying here? Now, if you look at the next paragraph... He says, from the very beginning, from that night in the cynical, when I handed over the mysteries, the mysteries. And this is what people are not understanding in churches today. The mysteries of my body and blood, my face, my heart, have been present in the most holy Eucharist. But this is true. It's a true revelation in the sense that now I desire to draw back the veil and do this. I will get back to the basics of faith and start teaching the people the basics of faith. Now, when you look at that, you ask yourself the question. When you, go to, when you went to church Holy Saturday, if I went into the church on Holy Saturday and I sat there for three hours in darkness... That's not Holy Saturday liturgy. Because Jesus didn't stay in darkness. We announce it after the blessing of the new fire. Fire came from heaven, rolled back to stone, and a great light appeared. That's why we say Christ our light three times. Father, Son, and Spirit. The unification of the eternal God. And the lights in the church come on to show resurrection. If you have to take a flashlight to go to church and read There's something wrong somewhere. And people just ignored it. Like it was nothing. When you do that, 
That shows you don't know your faith. Because if you knew the faith, you would know something's wrong here. And you would get up and go. And you would go somewhere where the mass, the liturgy is proclaimed according to Holy Mother Church. That's what Jesus is saying. How many Catholics don't know the faith? You could sit there for three hours in darkness and I, you could do have somebody in that sanctuary doing a dance and they would not know the difference. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So the Mass starts on uh, vigil with the church dark, and then the candles go around, and as soon as they do the creed, lights go on. That's right. Yeah, yeah right after the third acclamation, Christ our light, it's right there in the missalette. And people read it, they don't understand. That goes to show you the lack of understanding of faith. If I sat there for three hours in darkness, and I know the previous Holy Saturday I came in, and the lights went on, when the, when the Paschal candle was lit and the priest stopped three times going down the aisle to show the risen Christ... then I'd say to myself, hey, wait a minute. There's something wrong with this liturgy. This isn't the mind of the church. But people don't know their faith. That goes to show you they don't know their faith. They let it go by. Now, a couple people didn't. They called the bishop. And the bishop made a phone call the next day after Easter. But it goes to show the lack of understanding. That's what Jesus is saying here. Draw back the veil for crying out loud. You got a black veil in front of you. And if you don't remove it, You're going to be in darkness. Then he goes on to say here, there is nothing new in what I am saying to you, but there is much that has been forgotten, cast aside, and or even refuged out of the hardness of heart. That's what happened in the priesthood. And it happened to the laity. And so church became an ordinary thing. If I want to go, I go. If I don't want to go, I don't go. We made our churches ordinary places, just like going to the supermarket. Think about it. That's what Christ is saying. Where's the sacred, he's saying. He said, there's nothing new here. I have been forgotten and cast aside. I will use you to draw back the veil on what is Wheresoever I am sacramentally present. My face shining with all the splendor of my divinity and my pierced heart eternally open, a wellspring celebration. We bring souls into the church that on Holy Saturday. Not losing souls. 
seems we bring them in. It seems most of the people that go through our CIA are so much deeper into the faith yes. than the, everybody else in the church. That's correct. Because there is a sense of them wanting to be part of the sacred. Okay, we'll take our break and then we will return and continue with page 72. Our Lord taking back the veil. <laughs>